So a common vitamin that nearly everyone is taking might actually be damaging your brain. That's right. A groundbreaking study published in the Annuals of Neurology has discovered something that the supplement industry most likely doesn't want you to know. Too much B12 might be linked to brain cell damage. So if you're one of the millions of people taking B12 supplements daily, you need to watch this video all the way through. There's some important information you need to know, especially if you are planning on getting your B12 levels checked by a doctor anytime soon. Your brain health could depend on it. We've all heard that common wisdom, make sure you're getting enough vitamins. But what if the sweet spot for nutrients is like Goldilocks, not too little, not too much, just right. Today we're gonna to be talking about vitamin B12, that energy boosting, brain supporting nutrient that everyone from doctors to health enthusiasts recommend. But new research suggests we need to be a lot more careful than we previously thought. But before we dive into this new research, let's quickly cover what B12 is and why it's so important for your body. B12 or cobalamin is essential for many functions in the body. It helps make DNA, keeps your nerve and blood cells healthy, and prevents a specific type of anemia that can make you tired and weak. Most people get B12 from animal products like fish, meat, eggs, and dairy. That's why uh, vegans and vegetarians, older adults, and people with certain digestive conditions are often told to supplement with it. B12 has become one of the most popular supplements worldwide. Walk into any pharmacy or health food store, and you see dozens of options from standard vitamins to specialized B12 formulas promising to boost energy, improve memory, and even prevent aging. For years, the conventional wisdom has been that B12 is safe, even in large dosages, because it's water-soluble, meaning your body supposedly excretes what it doesn't need. But this new research challenges that assumption in a big way. The study I'm talking about was published in February 2025 in the Annuals of Neurology. The title is Vitamin B12 Levels Association with Functional and Structural Biomarkers of Central Nervous System Injury in Older Adults. Researchers at the University of California in San Francisco looked at 231 healthy older adults with the average age of about 71. These weren't people with diagnosed deficiencies or diseases. These were regular, seemingly healthy seniors. What makes this study so important is that they didn't just measure total B12 levels like your standard blood test does. They dug really deep and looked at different forms of B12 in the blood, along with markers of brain health like processing speed, visual response times, and even brain scans. And here's where things get really interesting. We've always been told to worry about having too little B12, right? But this study found concerning results at both ends of the spectrum. When participants had high levels of a specific form of B12 called halohaptocorin, which is basically the inactive storage form of B12 in your blood, they also had higher levels of something called Tau protein in their blood. This protein is a crucial protein normally found in neurons or brain cells that helps stabilize their internal structure. Think of it like the scaffolding that helps maintain the highways inside of your brain cells, allowing nutrients and signals to travel efficiently. When functioning properly, Tau helps maintain the structure of neurons and supports their communication systems. However, in neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's disease, Tau can become abnormal. It gets hyperphosphorylated modified by phosphate groups and starts clumping together, forming tangles inside the brain cells. These Tau tangles disrupt normal cellular function and are associated with brain cell damage and death. That's why elevated Tau in the blood is considered a biomarker or warning sign of neurodegeneration. The researchers found that the higher your active B12 levels were, the higher your Tau protein levels were. That's concerning to say the least, but it's not just about high levels. The study also found issues with low B12. Participants with lower levels of active form of B12 showed delayed visual processing in their brains and had more white matter hyperintensities, especially small lesions on their brain scans. These hyperintensities are small areas in the brain's white matter that appear as bright spots on certain types of MRI scans. The white matter is deep tissue that contains millions of nerve fibers that electrically wire the brain together, connecting different brain regions. These hyperintensities, they represent areas of potential damage where there are changes in water content, loss of myelin, the insulated sheath around the nerve fibers, or minor vascular injury. Think of white matter as the brain's communication network. When these hyperintensities form, it's like having static or interference on the line. These lesions are commonly found in older adults and are associated with various conditions, including aging, high blood pressure, diabetes, and cognitive decline. 
The more of these white matter lesions you have, the greater your risk for memory problems, slower processing speed, and balance issues. What's particularly fascinating is that these effects were observed in people whose total B12 levels were considered normal by the current medical standards. This suggests our definition of normal B12 levels might need to be reconsidered. Now let's address some common misconceptions about B12 supplementation that might be putting your brain health at risk. Misconception number one, you can't take too much B12. This is probably the most dangerous myth. Many people believe that since B12 is water soluble, excess amounts are simply just flushed out in the urine. But this new research suggests that that whole story, while acute toxicity is very rare, having chronic high levels, especially of the inactive form, might be associated with markers of brain damage. Misconception number two, more B12 means more energy. While B12 is involved in energy production, taking more than your body needs won't give you extra energy. Once your cells have what they need for normal function, additional B12 doesn't provide any additional benefits. And as this study suggests, it might even be harmful. Misconception number three, all B12 in your blood is the same. This is a crucial one. Not all B12 in your blood is created equal. There are actually two main forms. Hollow transcobalamin, this is the active form that your cells can actually use. Think of it as the key that unlocks the door to your cells. And then there's hollow haptocorin. This is the inactive form that can't directly enter your cells. It's more like B12 that's sitting around in storage. And here's the kicker. When you go to a doctor and get your B12 levels tested, they're measuring your total B12, not distinguishing between these two forms. So you could have what looks like normal levels or even high B12 on paper, but if too much is in that inactive form, you might still have problems. In fact, the study found that people with lower levels of the active form showed slower visual processing in their brains and more white matter lesions on their brain scans, even though their total B12 levels were considered normal. Let me give you an analogy that might help explain this concept even better. Imagine your body's B12 situation is like your financial status. When doctors test your total B12, it's like looking at your total net worth on paper. But just like with money, what matters isn't how much you have, but how much you can actually use. Think of active B12 as the cash in your wallet and checking account immediately available for your body to use. Meanwhile, inactive B12 is more like money locked in a long-term CD or investment that you can't access right away. You might look wealthy on paper with a million dollars, but if 990,000 is locked up in investments, and if you only have 10,000 in cash, you might still be struggling to pay your immediate bills. At the same time, you might have normal B12 levels, but still experience issues, especially if you don't have enough of the active usable form. So let's break this down. What does this mean to you? First, don't panic or throw away all your B12 supplements. This study shows a correlation, not causation, but it should make us all more thoughtful about supplement use. Second, be mindful of mega dosing. Many B12 supplements contain dosages that are hundreds or even thousands of times higher than what we actually need daily. The recommended daily intake is only about 2.4 micrograms for adults, yet many supplements contain 1,000, 2,500 to 5,000 micrograms. That's over 2,000 times what you need. When it comes to nutrients, more isn't always better. The researchers noted concerning findings at both the high and the low ends of B12 supplementation. Too little active B12 was associated with slower brain processing and more brain lesions. Too much active B12 was associated with higher levels of markers for brain cell damage. If you're supplementing with B12, consider talking to your healthcare provider about more comprehensive testing so you know where you're at. There are more specific tests that can measure the active form of B12 and related markers like uh, methylmanolonic acid and homocysteine, which give you a better picture of your overall B12 status. Now, those that should be paying closest attention to these findings are number one, older adults. The study focused on people with a median age of 71. And the researchers found that the effects of low active B12 on cognitive processing speed were age dependent, meaning the older you are, the more significant the impact. Number two, people taking high dosages of B12 supplements regularly, especially without a diagnosed deficiency. If you're taking those 1,000 to 5,000 microgram supplements daily, just as a brain health insurance policy, this research suggests a more moderate approach might be better. Number three, 
anyone with a family history of neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, the connection between high inactive B12 and Taiyu protein might be particularly relevant for you. And number four, vegetarians and vegans. Since B12 is mainly found in animal products, plant-based eaters often supplement. This study suggests we need to be more thoughtful about how much and what form we're taking. Now, here are some of the practical takeaways from this research. First, consider a more moderate approach to B12 supplementation. If you don't have a diagnosed deficiency, a standard multivitamin or B complex with a more reasonable amount of B12 might be better than a high dose standalone supplement. Second, focus on getting B12 from food sources when possible. Good sources include animal products, clams, liver, fish, meat, eggs, and dairy. For vegans and vegetarians, nutritional yeast, fortified plant milks, or cereals. Third, if you're in the high-risk group for deficiency, don't stop supplementing completely. The risk of true B12 deficiency are well-established and serious. Instead, discuss proper dosing with your healthcare provider. Fourth, consider more comprehensive B12 testing, especially if you're older, have neurological symptoms, or have been taking high-dose supplements for a long time. Ask your doctor about testing not just about total B12 markers, but methyl malonic acid. Five, remember that B12 vitamins work as a team. Some research suggests that taking B12 alone with other B vitamins, particularly folate and vitamin B6, may be more beneficial than taking B12 alone. Six, when choosing a B12 supplement form, consider these options. Cyanocobalamin, this is the synthetic most common and stable form. And yes, it does contain a cyanide molecule. That's where the cyano part of the name comes from. But it's important to understand that the amount is incredibly tiny and not harmful to your body. Your body actually easily detoxifies and eliminates this small amount of cyanide. Studies suggest cyanocobalamin may be a better absorbable form, particularly for vegans, and it's generally more affordable. A recent study actually showed it provided better results in maintaining B12 levels for vegans compared to methylcobalamin. Now, methylcobalamin. This is a naturally occurring form that some studies suggest may be better retained in the body. It's often marketed as a superior form because it's already in one of those active forms your body uses, though your body converts both forms as needed. Some people prefer it because it doesn't contain the cyanide molecule. Though again, the cyanide in cyanocobalamin is not a health concern for the majority of people. For most people, either form works effectively but cyanocobalamin may have a slight edge for maintaining proper B12 levels for those with absorption issues or on plant-based diets. The only people who should specifically avoid cyanocobalamin are those with rare genetic conditions affecting cyanide metabolism or severe kidney disease. And the frequency of taking B12 may be just as important as the form. More frequent intake, like smaller daily dosages, may maintain more consistent levels compared to large weekly dosages. So the conclusion of all this, this research really challenges our understanding of what optimal B12 levels are. We may need to completely revise the current reference ranges, especially for older adults. As the study authors put it, our current understanding of optimal serum B12 may have to be revisited to account for the clinical manifestations of B12 inadequacy at both ends of the spectrum. Remember, nutrition follows a U-shaped curve. Both too little and too much can be problematic. This is Dave. If you guys haven't checked out my last video, go check it out here. Other than that, stay strong, stay healthy, be informed, not influenced, and I'll see you next time on the channel.